the people we're with know the things we say about ourselves and then they reinforce the most negative things that we think about ourselves. One hundred percent. And and I was never enough. I could never. So when you trust someone to, that comes With in your, your life at the beginning, and you trust them as your friend, oh God, and you tell them, oh, I don't feel good about this. I hate this about myself. And they're all comforting you and so. And by the end of the relationship, they're calling you all those things, mm. calling you out. And so now it's just killing you and chipping away at you. But, you know, I'm stronger than that, you know? I'm str when I found out this person hated me more than I hated, hated himself and hated me more than I hated me, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna let you kill me. That's right. I'm gonna figure this out. Stop no, but on Carter. Oh, 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 Jay, Jay, okay, okay. That's why it's fuck Rock Nation. Hey. Wow, wow. I'm gonna tell everybody about Big L, Sean. Big L? I would just rather do it on the stand, Sean. Mm. Please sue me. I wanna go to court. And I wanna talk about Big L on the stand. Are celebrities trying to decode Jay-Z's rise to fame and power? Because it's not pretty at all. Of course, Jay Z's life is nothing less of a controversy itself. That that uh that song is about fame, mm -hmm. you know, and it's about the, the the way you know fame is fleeting. You know, the holy grail meaning like you chase this thing and these bright lights and these cameras, and then you look back, you want everything, and then you end up with nothing. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you have to stop yourself. You know, so that whole first verse is me complaining about it. You know, the fame. Mm -hmm. She cheats on me. You know, she she hangs out with Kanye and Drake and mm -hmm. J Cole. And I, what I do, I I took her back you know so when it's my turn i take her back so the whole thing is about fame and then the second verse is about you know so the biggest story around the world seems to be jay-z being attacked in the elevator by beyonce's sister solange it's leading on all the newscasts of course it's a hot topic here but it's amazing how the world has let go of everything else important and is talking about this she is kicking his behind and the security guard's trying to hold her back. Beyonce's next to Jay-Z in the corner. And um, I know you've seen this footage before, and you know that uh, Beyonce waited a long time before she stepped in between them. Uh, yes, she almost kicked him in his area. Uh, but he caught it. Um, this was at, as you might know by now, the after party to the Met Gala. Damn. This guy put you in the I had a car. Everybody. That's what I'm trying to say to you yeah. right Best. now. Best. This is what All Chopper waiting for. Drake, uh, this is what you've been waiting for. Jay Z, this is what you've been waiting for. Kim, this is what you've been waiting for. All you need. Look, let me tell you something. This is the way the world God works. Here. Okay, be quiet for a second. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I love you both. Okay. No, no, you gotta, you gotta, hey, stop, sorry. God, God runs the world. And under that, you got thousand year old families, Medici. Under that, you have the Vatican, the Pope. Under that, you have the financial groups that control all your sh Black Rock, 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 Vanguard. After that, you have Putin, you have Trump, you have all this shit. And after that, you got what all this shit is? Entertainment, Hollywood. Take that, run that back, run in the schools. What a I'm gonna give y'all one last thing before I go. But to make it easier, Mary J. Blige has come out and revealed Jay-Z's secret of selling the soul to the industry A-listers, among other things, all in an effort to gain fame and power. According to Blige, she believes she can no longer reconcile with Jay-Z, given he has become someone she doesn't recognize after achieving all that power. You did this, cool, I gotta fix it. You did it, but I'm not gonna waddle in what you did and oh God, he did me wrong, like, whatever, go ahead, go, hurry up. Cause I got this to do. I forgive you, but no reconciliation cause you destroyed that, you know, you destroyed that space. But I, and this is what, this is what got me here is the forgiveness of self, and the forgiveness of this person and, and releasing him. And you don't have to suffer no more. Cause I got this now. Here's everything you need to know. Even the most unaware and uninterested among you can identify common supposed Illuminati symbols, such as Jay-Z's signature triangular hand symbol the triple sixes, the all-seeing eye of providence on the back of the $1 bill, or just the fact that Jay-Z managed to keep his wife and children even after publicly cheating on Beyonce. There's a theory that um, <laughs> a lot of rappers, they, they get signed, especially nowadays. 
These labels, they crunch the numbers. They figure out what works, what brings them money, what doesn't. Rappers getting locked up mm -hmm. and rappers dying on two of the biggest money promotions makers. as yeah. far as money makers right. for labels. Have you ever thought, though, about the reason behind Beyonce's inability to leave a destructive marriage while being such a strong and influential woman? Basically, because Jay-Z supposedly belongs to the elite and has a seat at the table that not many people can afford, even Beyonce does not get to say much. Now, actors, singers, and comedians alike, such as Cat Williams, Jaguar Wright, Mary J. Blige, have now come out to clarify why only a select handful in Hollywood achieve the success that exceeds everyone else's. First off, Williams claims that individuals like Jay-Z are part of an unspoken agreement in certain Hollywood circles to maintain an appearance of peace and consistency. Williams also claims that these projects often enlist the support of influential individuals and networks that operate in secrecy. Kanye West, too, has frequently mentioned that these industry masterminds are in control of Jay-Z in exchange for power and quick success. Think about if Harley was part of intelligence, right? What kind of people you think are surrounding my kids? What kind of people you think are in that house right now? My kids go to Sierra Canyon. It's a Jewish school that doesn't teach Christianity to these Christian kids. At Christmas time, they're teaching Kwanzaa to black kids. They say, hey, this is your, this is your Christmas. This is all indoctrination. This is all mind control. You gotta understand, like I'm putting, I, I don't believe I'm putting myself at risk because I think God uses me for a time like this. He put me in this situation and had y'all follow me from George Bush, don't care, to you know, I had the best video to now. For some reason, y'all are interested. Two Chainz said, why is y'all black? Y'all niggas shoulders looking. Like, <laughs> y'all are, are interested for some reason. And they wanted to medicate me every day. You realize, like, they could have just switched to medication and I wouldn't be here. And on the news, they would have said it was because of a mental issue. But that's how they try to categorize. They can't control me. You get what I'm saying? They can control Shaq. They can control Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. But not you, man. But they can't control me. Not you see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. Now, Jay-Z isn't the only person who achieves success by taking a quick route. Williams also tackled the complicated dynamics of Hollywood parties head on, exposing the occasionally cryptic and mysterious nature of these invite-only events, which are arranged notably by Diddy, who is known to be close to Jay-Z. Additionally, Williams revealed that these parties serve as gathering places for these people to exchange their souls for power, success, and fame. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. <laughs> See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can yeah, say yeah, I'm I, so I mean, freely. Kid, I need to know. Here, get you a note. Thank what you, sir. Care. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being. Can't. Man. Can't. Yeah, it's crazy because I'm favored by God. Like, when I see people's wives and stuff, I don't even look at them, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. <laughs> That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, man, come. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dave Chappelle has also spoken out on the subject, drawing on his own experience. You see, he was under pressure to compose skits that would make audiences laugh at him rather than with him and he has been very upfront about this. It felt like they were pressuring him to defame himself so he could make money and be more successful while they fulfilled their agenda. But that wasn't the only thing that worried him. Part of the reason was the clothing choice. Like when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know, but certain dots like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting that dot like, why all these brothers gotta wear a dress? That's happened to me. I'm doing a movie with Martin. Yeah. The movie's going good. So I walk in a trailer. I'm like, man, this must be the wrong trailer because there's a dress in here. 
They come in. It's the writer comes in. I think he's the writer. He's like, Dave, listen, we got this hilarious scene where Martin's sneaking out of jail. So he disguises you as a prostitute. <laughs> you see, Dave and Kat stumbled onto a peculiar Hollywood trend. At some time throughout their careers, every black male actor was expected to dress like a woman to gain power and notoriety. And even he was a victim of this. First of all, let's be very, very clear. It is possible that there isn't anything funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Although it's interesting to note that in 2012, Kevin was questioned on Dave's claims that black performers face unfair pressure from the entertainment industry to dress like women. Now, in response to Dave's remarks, Kevin smiled and offered Kat some advice. He did not, however, completely rule out the idea of ever wearing a dress. Instead, he emphasized the need to uphold one's own personal boundaries. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking, uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. Why was he a risk? He chose you. Oh, okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what, I gotta fix me and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna stand up for comedy. Mm -hmm. In his statement, he stressed how crucial it was to protect his reputation and make sure nothing could harm it. Uh, I definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the trust. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged, so you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. I you look said good no to that. It, <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brain can be diminished, and, and you don't you don't want that to happen. The guy that sits on top right now have taken advantage of all the money that I have. I've shot over 56 specials for the up and coming generation of comedy. Why? Because I'm trying to create opportunities for others, rather than complaining yeah. about it. Yet Kevin appeared in a dress wearing routine on Saturday Night Live barely a year later. Obviously, fans were upset and accused him of caving into commercial forces when they saw this. saw this one coming. Not to mention, Kevin's popularity surged as a result of this sketch, even though he had already seen a significant lot of success prior to it. But right after agreeing to the demands of the higher-ups, he was soon headlining big gigs and selling out stadiums. I'm fixing it. Mm. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Mm -hmm. I also take full responsibility for any and everything that I've done in the business, mm -hmm. good or bad. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from, you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. Yeah. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. So do you see the pattern now? Basically, all it takes to achieve success and fame that you would otherwise have to work really hard for is to submit to the demands of those in positions of authority in the industry. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It did happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jesse Smollett gonna keep lying until you say, we don't believe you. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? 
These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. And even though there isn't any concrete evidence of a contemporary Illuminati, conspiracy theorists continue to speculate about which celebrities may be members. You see, die-hard supporters are ready to cite examples, arguing that anything from the outfits of celebrities to their body language may be interpreted in a deeper way. Then again, certain examples, such as overt allusions to the Illuminati in musical lyrics, are more believable than others. Yet, these confusing instances of proof are typically a stretch, similar to the acute angle of an updo. In any case, it's honestly interesting to monitor which celebrities are allegedly part of the Illuminati and what hints they have supposedly revealed about themselves. All in all, if Jay is the king of the Illuminati, and if Rihanna is the queen, then they are creating the next wave of enlightened royalty together, and the world isn't ready for it. That's all for today. Do share your thoughts in the comments below. For more updates, hit the bell icon.